You see, the problem was I knew the sex of the child. It was a girl. And for some reason, I just assumed that her name would be Sally. It's funny, it wasn't even a question for me. I mean, from the very beginning, that was her name. I never even talked to my wife about it. I don't know why. I mean, she probably would have gone along with it, you know. But not that it... Not that that's... It's kind of immaterial now. Yeah, so anyway, we have the test to find out if it's a boy or a girl. And Nancy's a real no-nonsense type of person. I mean, she wanted to know what kind of clothes and things to buy, and that was just that. I wasn't all that pleased. I mean, I was thrilled, of course. I, I was. It's just that I come from a family of women, and, and at work I'm surrounded by women. And, and I love women, you know, but, you know. But the thing was, you know, what, what started happening was, oh, it was amazing. I began having these absolutely crystal clear dreams, you know, which I'd remember when I'd wake up. And this is very unusual for me. And I mean, they were mind-blowingly large and in color and wrap around. And, and in them, I was doing things with this fabulous little girl. And I just figured that she must be Sally. And she actually told me at one point. And we were sitting on top of the Eiffel Tower one time, watching these flamingos go by. Yeah, I won't go into that. Anyway, she just looks up at me and she says, Hey, in case you haven't caught on yet, I'm Sally, twerp. And I was like, Duh. It, right. Of course. <laughs> and I just look at her. And just marvel at her. The mere presence of her. You know, my own child. And I mean, she wasn't perfect looking or anything. I mean, she had these kind of nerdy, narrow shoulders and, and lank hair like Nancy. And she was slightly pigeon-toed like me. But there she was. Utterly real. And I'd wake up having just been with her, and I'd, I'd roll over, and I'd look at Nancy's belly, and I'd just stare at it, smiling. Because I knew she was in there, biding her time. Ah, oh, I was so impatient to meet her. You know, which is what I thought might have caused it, you know? Like, maybe the fact that I made her premature, you know? All the bullshit you do to yourself. Really, the worst part was she actually lived for a whole afternoon. I mean, not that I wish she hadn't lived those four hours, you know, obviously, you know. I just wish. No. I actually got to hold her for as long as you can with those plastic mitts that go into the fish tank. She was pigeon-toed, you know. <laughs> Although that was the least of her problems. In fact, if you ask me, it gave her kind of a panache. <laughs> she actually opened her eyes and looked at me. And the look was so old. So sort of amused, like, can you believe this? And then she died ten minutes later when I left the room. I heard this word bereft the other day. And I thought, yeah, yeah that was... Yeah, well, that was Sally.